Why, Mr. Bazelli, it's been a while since we've had you grace our camera. I needed a Here, cocktail. Uh, <laughs> so did I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you look great. Oh, thank Welcome you. back to the camera. Um, today, we are reviewing a Fun Home yes. by, by Front Porch Theatricals. Uh, uh, this story was written by Alison Blechdel from her graphic novel. Uh, it was adapted by Jennifer Crone. And you know, Crone. I can't think of another musical that's ever been adapted from a graphic novel. Can no, you? I believe this is the first one. That's because, really cool. Well, there's Spider Man Into the Dark. I mean, does that count? <sighs> Let's not count it. Okay. But no, that's cool. With like the graphic novel, you almost get like what a storyboard for your whole show. Yes, exactly. Uh, as a director, I might appreciate that. I don't know. Exactly. Have you read it? Have you ever? Uh... I have not read it per se. I've read some of other works of Alison Bledel's. Uh, she's very talented, uh, fantastic artist, great storyteller. Uh, this particular story is very personal. It's about her co coming of age, growing up, and her relationship with her father. She, um, her family grows up in a funeral home. Her and her two brothers, and that's where we get fun home. It's like fun home funeral for funeral, funeral home. Yeah, yeah. Yes. they put the fun in funeral. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was. There's an interesting dynamic between her and her father. Oh, she yeah. comes out as a lesbian in college, and finds out that her father has been having secret, secret extramarital affairs with men. Yeah, it's quite a story. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the show itself, for me, I, I think is is it's bleak. Okay, and it's it's a little slow moving, and it's very bleak. However, it is deeply personal, yeah. And you you can't help but be moved. Yeah, by, I like the specific uh, the nature of the show, the, right? And how deep she goes into her personal life. Extremely character driven. So I yes. think that's maybe important to know mm -hmm. if you're expecting like a toe tap and jazzy old time. You know, it is not. <laughs> it is not Mamma Mia. No, no, no. It's the know, furthest thing from Mamma Mia. And you know, you, my expertise is you know lies primarily in non musical theater, so I didn't really know much about this going in. Um, I have to say. I think it could work really well as a non-musical piece, right? Because I think there was a there were, um, yeah, just a, as many kind of non-musical scenes as there were musical scenes, right? Uh, and I think you know, really, when you take step back and take a look at that story, a musical is an interesting choice of treatment for a genre in which to tell. It. Yeah, but it works. It works. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting is it. I believe it was one of the first Broadway plays with a lesbian as the center of the. The story. Well, it's about damn time. So yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the and um, Allison is played by three young women. Oh yeah, like at three different stages it's of her three life. Three different which is stages really of her life. She goes. We have our the baby version, <laughs> the young version. And now come on, well, it's college version. It's small, medium, and Allison Bechtel. It's <laughs> how it goes. Never. No, that's how small Allison, medium Allison. Oh and okay. Allison Bechtel. Oh, it's okay. like you know, shirt want sizes. Say, it, they didn't want to say large. I no, guess. no, no, no. <laughs> present adult, present. adult version. Uh, oh, the yeah. adult version is uh, Julie Williams. Yes. Uh, the younger, uh, the college age one is Nala Cleary, and then um, we have also Livia uh, Rocco. Livia, is small Allison, small. Uh, who was really adorable. Well, I think yeah, and there are uh, three very young actors in this. Livia Rocco is one playing small Allison. Um, also uh, playing Christian Bechtel, Eamon McElfrish, and then Daniel Franz playing John Bechtel. I think a very, very admirable performance from all the young actors. Oh, the, act, the young yeah. actors were terrific. Um, um, I have to say I thought everyone was very good. The uh, The acting is is excellent. It, Broadway quality, I right. think. So to transition from you know the, the show itself to this particular production, I think mm -hmm. Front Porch has done a really great job, as they always do, yeah. with taking sort of a lesser-known musical and just really acing it. Yeah, and uh, you know, this is a story I think needs to be told. Uh, it, it, it's an excellent example of of seeing something different instead of the usual fare. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, absolutely. But very crisp, very clean under the direction of Spencer Whale. Exactly. Um, it looked great. Uh, yeah, very crisp and clean on stage. Uh, and uh, I, although I didn't see this on Broadway, off Broadway, but yeah, I imagine this was that my this, first time. Too. This production has to help hold up to you know a, a, a New York uh, performance. I would agree. Uh, you know. I always want more Julie Williams. I thought she was fantastic. She was. She, she's just extremely good. <laughs> she, she, she really, really is. is. The the show doesn't really um, provide a whole lot. I mean, I would consider her the lead, but it doesn't necessarily provide her a lot more work than anybody else. Right. I really feel it's, it's just very as much. Ensemble. Yes. It's just as much her story as it is uh, Bruce Bechtel, uh, mm-hmm. her father, is played by Daniel Krell. Mm-hmm. Now, I've got to say this about his performance in this. Again, not knowing a lot about this show going into it. Oh, so it starts out and, you know, Daniel Krell is Bruce. You know, sort of like, okay, this is the token father role. And, you know, of course, you know. Yeah, that's Dan how is, it starts. Dan is very good at playing that. There, now I know a lot about a lot of things, but I got to tell you, I would have no clue how to, how to p- portray this character, nor how to direct somebody to do it. It actually is an extremely difficult character to play mm-hmm. when you s- s- the story begins to unfold and you realize all of the things that are going on inside this man's heart and mind. A very complex character and not easy to do because uh, right. you can overplay it in certain ways and it would not work. I think Daniel Krell did an excellent job yes. at bringing this very complex man to life. You know, with all of his um, shortcomings, but also you know, in a way that you might sympathize with him and have sympathy mm-hmm. for him. An extremely complex character, and I think really it's just as much his story as it is the character of Allison. That speaks really well of Alex Allison Bechtel's storytelling, too. It's really, she goes in very deep, and she lets you know right away that here's what I think is my memory of my father. Yeah. Like, you know, she does a thing about memories are not always trustworthy. Yeah. And I like that aspect of it. So she gives a, she gives her interpretation of her dad and, 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 and he comes off as a real person. Extremely deep. And I think that Mr. Krell handled that incredibly. And yeah, (laughs) like I said... Oh, nuanced yeah. is the word you're looking and like for. And like I say, it starts off, I think it's like that token, you know, dad character, but by the end of it, it's like, wow, like, you want to, like, find this guy and give him a hug, you know? Yeah. It's just like, holy crap. Yeah. And um, I, I think also the same can be said to a degree for uh, Cynthia Doggerty, who played Helen Bechtel, yeah. Allison's mother, I think did a really great job at playing, you know, the, the role of the wife and mother that is sort of tolerating a lot and yeah, uh, like how? What do you put up with to be? Oh yeah, and again, to keep not your over, home, to not keep your overplayed. Children. Yeah, very you know um, appropriately played, and that just tugged at your heartstrings. And I think her piece de resistance, days and days, is the number that she sings towards the end oh, of the yeah. show about sort of how she has kept up and maintained this facade of happiness in their home, and you know she doesn't wish that for her own daughter. I don't get, like, moved to tears very often in the theater, but that number did it. Yeah. In fact, that whole, like, last half of the show... You know what? I have to um, say, I think the music improves the second half of the show. I, at the very beginning, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this, because the very first few songs aren't very memorable. It's, I'm not, like, really connecting with the songs... I connected with the story yeah, really it's, well. It's, even though it's a musical, I don't feel that this is a music-driven uh, piece of theater. It's very much a character-driven piece of theater oh, yeah. that happens to have music to it. That's how exactly. I would look at it. Uh, yeah, there's no nothing you walk out of here humming. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But uh, uh, the storytelling in some of the numbers I thought was very It's funny good. that you were moved to tears in one song. I was oh, moved yeah. to laughter in another. There is a song <laughs> that Drew... And uh, the little version, uh, small Alice and Livia Rocco. Rocco, and this is pretty much a uh, Livia Rocco solo. Oh, uh, and she yeah. does a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah. However, she's singing about the first time she sees a butch-looking woman, a lesbian. Yeah, and, and then to kind of register that, like, oh, I'm attracted to that. Right. But the song is called "Ring of Keys." 
<laughs> and I don't know if everyone knows this, but in like the mid to late eighties, every lesbian you didn't even have. If you had the big pack of keys on the side of your pa- people, ju- you didn't even have to have a girl on your arm. People knew you were a lesbian by the keys. I always wondered where all those keys went to. Like who? What? How are there lockers all over America for this lesbian? For lesbians? Are there like lesbian lockers somewhere? Now, now see, I, I guess that might be part of the like stereotypical like yeah. m- motif of an '80s lesbian. But I didn't think that was like particularly one that like stood out. I think you maybe need some other components like Birkenstocks and like a certain like a in the '80s like a mullet haircut, a mullet to, or the to, rat to, tail right, was a thing, it, or the you know, John Lennon glass. And I, I know these are stereotypes. Very and I, smart vests. I talk of them lovingly, you know. I, I do. This is not, and I do know that there's stereotypes. Ring a key. But ring a key specifically stood out because you were laughing, and you were the only one. Well, and then I, you know, my friend, <laughs> I was the only one. But, I'm terrible. But uh, but I looked around that theater. I'm like, there were some more of you that were gay in the '80s. Come on, yeah, I mean, I laugh know, at this. I know. But, I, you know. I wish my friend Alexa was there because she's got a giant ring of keys. Still, on it. still, Thank God for her. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you're watching this. Alexa. But that—that that was a—I cl- uh-huh. think that was a cleverly written song. It and was it, very it clever. It was a little hubris, but it was kind of beautiful. Because it was also beautiful because when you see someone that embodies what you want to be for the first time. It's very touching, and I have never seen that expressed on stage or in no. music prior to this. No, so that was that yeah. was important. Uh, I think too, but. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I I was really affected by this, and That's um, good. A good theater should move you. You know, afterwards, you know, we kind of just got in our cars and left. And I apologize that as your friend, I didn't know how to say to you, I don't feel like being alone right now. Like oh. because because I really I'm telling you this really oh. was emotionally, fa- and I'm driving home thinking I've got to now go home to an empty house. I hope there's vodka. <laughs> and there was. There was. <laughs> yeah, which is why still, you know, I'm surprised some, there's still some left. <laughs> me too. But yeah, it really it stuck with me and it really deeply affected oh, me. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I uh, I really enjoyed it. I um, like I said, I would have enjoyed it though as, as a non musical piece, probably just as much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. Um, I, yeah. yeah, like I said before, I think music is an interesting way to tell the story. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anything they could have done to have made it better. I mean, the, just I think there's some technical issues with some of the microphones oh, they yeah, might that need to happens. work out. But um, All the time yeah, that made live mics. some characters hard to hear over the music and mm-hmm. things like that. But um, no, stellar I, cast, yes, and a very, very, very well done yeah. uh, production. And I would also say. Um, you know, I'll reach out to the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community here in Pittsburgh and say, come see this show. I mean, it's an important piece to see. Um, come see Fun Home. Through August 25th at the New Hazlet Theater on the north side by Front Porch Theatricals. Drink oh. now. Indeed. <laughs>